Well, let's talk about football YouTube, shall we? About a month ago, I did a video about football podcasts, and that was received really well, and despite a few DMs from some certain people not happy with me, sorry about that, I got asked about doing a video about football YouTube and how football YouTube is kind of planted right now compared to what it used to be in the past. So let's do a thought experiment here. If I was to say to you, uh, football YouTube, who are the first two, three people that you think of? I'll give you five seconds. Have a think. Who do you think of? Football YouTube, which is a wide, broad space, probably Fogden. And for the best football prints on the market, including the brand new Virgil van Dijk v Chelsea in the cup final, this was recorded 10 minutes ago. Link down below, top of the description, use code YouTube for 20% off all items. I don't want to talk about Fogden too much because, you know, his dad may try to start on me again. Ever since my video on Fogden about a year ago, he's been relatively... Uh, calm. He's doing his own thing on the side of YouTube, doing vlogs, showcasing football from different parts of the world. Morocco being one of them. I, I think he really likes Morocco. He went to the Asian Cup, showcased all of that. That's all fine. Fogden for me is relatively harmless and despite the hate that he does get from a lot of people, it does come from a lot of jealousy, let's be completely honest here. There are some things that could be debatable about what he's done before in the past, but I don't think there's anything really too serious that he's done that I think is worthwhile hating on a person. And just saying, I think he's gone to one game for Burnley this year. I mean, won 5-0. So I swear to God, mate, I will pay you money. Please go to the next game. How about another side of football YouTube? Football club content creators. Now, the only issue is the fact that for the vast majority, 95%, they're all completely fine. They're all completely harmless. Most are using StreamYard and just doing their own little thing. Talk about the club in a quite a positive light. Completely fine. Completely harmless. Keep doing your thing, boys. The main issue is, is that sadly, in this kind of industry, you don't really get spotted or recognized or really put up to a large level unless if you do two things number one start talking complete sh or number two to completely dig out your football club and be seen as a bit of a pariah. The best example of this is actually from the game yesterday. So, Manchester United, of course, massive fan base, massive club, a lot of fans all around the world. You could probably name me about five or four YouTubers. However, the, the main issue is the fact that there's people from the United space that I quite respect the opinions of. For example, I do respect the opinions of the likes of Stephen Housen. You may not like him as a person, but I quite like him. I think that he's quite reasonable about his takes. He comes across like a normal fan. And then there's the other side of it, which is um, Sae TV. And the, look at the title here, okay? Now, he's got more views than Stephen Housen because of one key thing. He's pretty much reaching out to not Manchester United fans here. I'm sorry, yeah, but if you're going to put in the title of your video, okay, explosive rant, then that's not you being genuine here. And by the way, I must reiterate, sadly, this is how it works. FIFA is one side of it. I was quite well known for being the angry FIFA guy. And to be fair, I kind of thrived off being that guy that kind of would do a rant video about FIFA. And sometimes I still do it now because I find the way that FIFA is or EAFC, completely disgusting and disgraceful, especially the way that they, uh, just the microtransactions and the packs and all the money and the gambling that goes around it. I think it's not spoken enough. I think it's personally um, disgraceful that it's normalized by the entire community, how the packs and the everything has been completely pushed towards putting your money into the game. And if you're a FIFA content creator and you are not speaking out about that, then in my opinion, it's just my opinion, you're part of the problem. Anyway, where was I? Mark Gorbridge. It becomes quite a, a disparaging figure because he doesn't really, he's not too like in your face that he's that annoying. He's kind of harmless at times. However, he's definitely one that can rile up a lot of people, mostly in his own fan base, I find. Many people outside of being a United fan doesn't mind Mark Gorbridge, but if you're a United fan, it seems like you either love him or you despise him. There's not really much in between for most people I know. Fan channels, okay? The best of samples is, let's say, for example, the Chelsea community in terms of a biased normal opinion. And it can be angry, can be annoyed, like many fans can be. At least it feels like they're genuine. For example, George Benson, Chelsea, lad, love him. I really think he comes across really well. The other side of it is Rory Jennings. I just look at the titles here. It's stupid. Moving on. Arsenal, I've got some great fans with some great opinions. Of course, believe it or not, AFTV has become very reasonable, quite positive, as they should because they're doing very well right now. And I think that they are... I've, doing very well actually of being just an all-around decent voice for the entire community and then there's lee gunner 
Christ almighty, there's something wrong with that lad. This is one thing that I found annoying about modern football in general, but it feels like there's parts of communities of football clubs that it feels like they have an opinion about a certain manager or a certain player and they are happy when they lose or happy when that player has a bad performance so that they can really be insistent that, that they were right. It comes across that some fans really want their club to do badly so that they can insist that they were right the entire time and that their ego is put forward of the football club. That's how these fan channels that really strives on negativity comes across. But hey, I know their name because of how they are and that is part of the issue. So many more reasonable Arsenal, Chelsea or Liverpool or Spurs fans, there's so many of them, but you probably don't know who they are that well because you won't see their clips put all over social media and that is same thing with YouTube as well. But hey, let's go into some of my favourite channels on YouTube. I gotta give a shout out to one of the best lads out there, Away Days. I've known him since about 2015-16 and the rise that he's took through the community is in my opinion one of the most humbling and one of the best risers I've seen by really anyone in the entire scene. It's actually quite emotional. And especially his collaborations with classic football shirts really sits well. He has a personality that you can't really hate him. He's so just likable. He's like a golden retriever, okay? I think that's I think that's not an insult. Similar to like the Ellis Platin away days or Fogden Camp is also Stunts Peg 2, which is really one of the biggest, I think the biggest actually like female content creator in the football space. And I think she does a fantastic job, especially as from her perspective, I can already feel that there's more pressure on her to be really on it because there's always going to be idiots out there that will always think that women can not speak about football and not really be fully into it. And I think that she does a lot to really show that she knows a lot more than most men out there, including myself. Also, shout out to my own personal favourite vlogger that I like to see. It's a Scottish man called Blair McAnally. I think he's great. I think he covers a lot of really good niche topics in football and doesn't always go for the obvious one. I think he's great personally. And I can't talk about football vloggers without also mentioning Bootlegger, who is just a cult icon in the entire football scene, never to be forgotten. And then there's the Tarkus, and I guess you can maybe put me in this category. I don't think I'm really that big. I don't know how I've gained 400,000 subscribers. I find that insane, genuinely. I must insist, I don't think I'm that small. I don't think I'm that knowledgeable of football. I just talk really. And if you like it, then I, I thank you so much for that. But the talkers I'm speaking of are the likes of HITC7s, the likes of Irish Guy, the likes of FNG. All three of them, in my opinion, offers something so different to one another. FNG goes on a much more comedic route and he's genuinely one of the most genuine people in the entire community. And hence why I invited him to my goddamn wedding. The Irish Guy comes across quite authentic. The fact that his videos isn't really heavily edited. He doesn't really try too hard to really impress you in terms of the production. He just talks and people find that interesting. People find it comedic and he could talk about really any wild topic and people just like it because one thing that people like is a person that can also give it but also take it and when they make a mistake or when they make themselves look silly, they own it and people like that. People don't like someone who thinks that they're really smarter than what they actually are and think they're always right because that comes across like they're better than you and that's one thing that Irish guy seems to always nail. And then of course there's HITC7 so that comes across quite articulate and can talk about very serious topics that when there's something serious going on, if it's about the World Cup, I like to listen to him because even though I find his videos much more I guess slower and for some people may come across maybe a bit boring. I think it matters when it comes to a serious topic and you actually want to get to the nitty gritty details of a football club or of a situation. And also don't forget Macwell as well. Top bloke, top lad. And I also like his view on things because he comes from a, a completely different you know, American perspective. But also like his, his view on things I find really interesting because it's outside of the typical world of what we kind of know of the English football and how we see it. I think that his insight is actually really important at times. Also shout out to the likes of Zealand as well. He's kind of more foot manager, but he's also dove quite deep into football content too. Really good blog and also football iconic as well. It's similar as well to my kind of channel. 
and I think that he does go into things, in my opinion, as it's kind of this and me, but probably a bit more detail, a bit more informational. I don't know what I really offer, but you guys are somehow here and you like me, so thanks for that. Another part of football YouTube is the more kind of tactical, very informational side that is more really going into the game and the nitty gritty detail. So this is the likes of James Olcott, the likes of Sharky as well, SDS, T4 Football, Statman Dave. All of these channels are great, gives a great insight. Personally, not my type of content as I I, I find the kind of tactical side of football. For me, for the most part, quite boring, hence why I don't really talk about it myself because my, my brain's quite small. However, they've all got a great place. And when they're on about your football club in particular, it's, of course, very interesting. And then last but not least, there's the in real life football YouTubers. So the, probably the first names that come to your mind is like so Chris MD, J Football TV. By the way, this is actually one of my favorite channels on YouTube. It's like my kind of hidden pleasure where J Football TV is like this Japanese footballer that plays football for GoPro on Z. And I can't explain it to you. It's like my version of ASMR. I find it really satisfying to watch him play football. Also real life football, football clubs, hashtag United is, is of course the obvious one, but smaller clubs like SC Dons. I enjoy watching SC Dons. Five guys when it comes to their kind of five-a-side team i find it interesting from time to time and of course the og palmers fc is still enjoyable to watch even when you look back in their videos back in the day bay tees i like keeping up to date with stretford paddock i like keeping up to date with and there's also another in real life youtuber that you definitely know of called sv2 which i mean is child type of content is definitely not for me however how he's mastered that part of the industry is something that I can only credit him for. Also aiming at SV2 kind of child friendly kind of content. There's been a big influence you've probably found of all your videos recently of the likes of Danny Yarens or Angry Ginge kind of being forced down your throat at every possible opportunity. And of course they're now delving into the world of the kind of mainstream English kind of football content or just English content in general. And it looks like no matter where you look they're pretty much everywhere. All also in terms of the PR brand heavy type of industries. The Saturday Social on Sky Sports is where you find quite a lot of YouTubers that all seem to be in the same kind of industry as well, which uh, by no means am I going to get to invite. I think most of the scene probably hates me anyway. Chris MD, of course, the pioneer of the industry and his content is absolutely remarkable. It still doesn't feel too brand heavy, but on the other side of the spectrum is the likes of F2 Freestyle as that. Uh, pr pretty much feels like it's made by an AI generative bot at this stage, unfortunately. Hence why they've only uploaded two videos in the last six months because they will only upload once a brand pays for them. And the side men are pretty much like in the middle of like a F2 freestylers and a Chris MD where it's not too franchisey that it feels like it's disingenuous. But at the same time, the kind of beauty of the side men is now lost as they become a much more larger brand. And even though they are still, in my opinion, for the most part, all great lads, of course, they have to come across more like a brand. So it comes across a bit more sanitized, but nonetheless, still great content which is probably aimed at more of a, a younger audience similar to the likes of a, a chunks or a young philly as well they kind of go in that kind of same side men category and even though i did mention hashtag united earlier i do want to say spencer fc sadly as he is of course a busy man now because a hashtag is the pioneer of the football scene and the work that he did for the likes of the Wembley Cup will never be forgotten, never be repeated. My God, I wish they did that again. The respect should always be at the footstep of Spencer FC. So coming to the end of this, if I was to give you like a list of three people that I would say that you've got to watch if you're a football person, I would say Ellis Platten, away days. I think that's his view of football, the way that he presents it is really good and I think comes across really genuine. Chris MD unfortunately doesn't upload that much because his content is really kind of hardcore to edit and it's top, top quality. But for the best all-round football in real life content, it has to be Chris MD. And for the third person, and maybe I'm dissing myself here, but I would probably say for more a targeted like, informational kind of channel, I would say HITC7 or just really alfy the videos that he does. I think that when it comes to a lot of topics, he knows his stuff. He's also much more articulate than what I could ever be. And I think that when it comes to especially a serious topic like Qatar World Cup or anything that happens that you classify as a bit more serious, I think he's the best about. So yeah, then that's my thoughts on football YouTube. Tell me your thoughts down in the comments and I'll see you next time. See ya.